Uh, hello, uh, today is uh, August 19th, um, 2023, and we'll talk now about uh, a North American architect, Adrian Smith, who was born on the 19th of August, 1954. Let's read a little bit about him. But before we read a little bit about him, when I search, when I search for images with Adrian Smith, this is not Adrian Smith, the architect, but Adrian Smith, the famed uh, guitarist of Iron Maiden, uh, and uh, you know, I, I, I like to I like to uh, show yeah, the beginning of the presentation on the architect Adrian Smith. That somehow popular music has the upper hand, uh, even um, you know, these are the important architects. So this is Adrian Smith, um, the guitarist from Iron Maiden. And now we'll, we'll see a different Adrian Smith, the architect, the one who was born on, uh, on, uh, on August uh, 19th. I don't know when uh, Adrian Smith, the guitarist from Iron Maiden was born. So our task is to talk about the architect and architecture. So Adrian Smith, the architect. As you see, he was born August 19th. He's an American architect. He designed the world's tallest structure, Burj Khalifa, as well as the building projected to surpass it, the Jeddah Tower. Among his other projects, he was the senior architect for the Trump International Hotel and Tower in Chicago, the Jin Mao Tower in Shanghai, and Zipeng Tower in Nanjing. Uh, Adrian Smith was born in Chicago in 1944. When he was four years old, his family moved to Southern California, where he grew up. His interest in drawing led his mother to suggest that he studied architecture. Adrian Smith attended Texas A&M University, pursuing a Bachelor of Architecture, while being involved with the courts of cadets. However, he did not graduate, and instead started working for Skidmore Owings and Mary, SOM, in 1967, so at 23. He finished, though, his education at the University of Illinois in Chicago, the Chicago College of Architecture and Arts, graduating, graduating in 1969, so at 25. In 2013, Smith was presented with an honorary doctorate of letters degree from Texas A&M University. Smith spent many years at Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, SOM, a famous uh, architecture firm in Chicago beginning in 1967 and was a design partner from 1980 to 2003, so for 23 years, and a consulting design partner from 2003 to 2006. In 2006, that is uh, uh, 17 years ago, he founded Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill Architecture, AS plus GG, which is dedicated to the design of high performance, energy efficient and sustainable architecture on an international scale. In 2008, he co-founded the MAP firm of positive energy practice, PEP, which specializes in the, the environmental engineering of high performance energy efficient architecture. This is the man uh, dressed in black as many architects love to dress. Uh, and uh, yeah, he built the tallest building in the world. Uh, he looks like a priest here, doesn't he? And that's the, that's the tall building that we are going to see in detail uh, later on. Adrian Smith. Banco de Occidente, 1980, Guatemala City, Guatemala in SO, by SOM. He, he designed it while he worked for Skidmore, Owings and Mary. United Gulf Bank building, 1986, another bank by SOM in Bahrain. Adrian Smith, designer. Uh, 
there is some architectural drama here, you know, built with the money of uh, banks and with the money of Bahrain. Olympia Center, Chicago unit, United States, also when he worked for SOM, 1986, no pictures. I was worth, I don't know what this is. Uh, you know, this time SOM was affected as uh, other architects and architecture firms by postmodernism. And I see that uh, Adrian Smith, uh, you know, uh, tried to accommodate uh, that influence to an extent. And this is uh, in part, uh, I, I would say, detrimental. The NBC Tower from 1989, uh, again from Chicago SOM, with uh, Adrian Smith as designer. USG building, uh, the, the currently AT&T Corporate Center, 1991, Chicago. Uh, but no pictures. Uh, this is another office tower in 1992 in London. I think a good work and uh, scaled down to an European size. I personally like more this work than what he did in, uh, in the United States around this time. Uh, Dahran, uh, Saudi Arabia, 1993, Aramco headquarters office. He built for uh, corporations uh, a lot. Um, I don't think would, uh, but who knows, he could contradict us. I wanted to say that I, I don't expect him to design um, you know, the, you know, something similar to Le Cabanon by Le Corbusier, but who knows? Washington University Psychology Building, 1996 in St. Louis, no pictures. Jin Mao Tower, 1999 in Shanghai, China. Very well crafted. Nineteen ninety-eight. Almost pagoda like. There are beautiful pagodas in many villages in old China. Uh, rural pagodas, which are very, very beautiful. Now, this is a large building in Shanghai. He was probably inspired by some pagodas. Sao Paulo, Brazil, 2002. Uh, more mediocre building, if you ask me. General Motors Renaissance Center, 2003, Detroit. But here I'm confused because um, I thought that uh, John Portman uh, did the Renaissance Center. Maybe there is a, a part of this complex of buildings was designed by SOM. I have to double check this. Uh, what is this in Boston? Congress Street, Manuality Financial in the United States. Another office building in Boston. Lots of glass. Uh, a lot of people who use a lot of glass still claim that they are very energy efficient and all the rest, but I'm a little bit uh, doubtful. With so much glass, you do need air conditioning. I mean, do you see any window here opening? No. You need air conditioning. Is that sustainable? I don't think so. International Banking Headquarters, uh, London, United Kingdom. And the bank it is. A cathedral would, would look minuscule in its proximity. Tower Palace, Seoul, Korea.
Jubilee Park Pavilion in London, 2004, also while he was working for Skidmore, Owings and Mary. And no pictures, and now we, we, uh, he became independent. He associated himself with Gordon Gill, and they started uh, you know, their own practice with uh, uh, lots of buildings that uh, assert, I would say, their firm uh, quite eloquently. Two serious men, both dressed in black. Well, here there is a white shirt. The FKI Tower in Seoul, 2013. So from, uh, forgot, I guess from 2004 to 2005 or so, he began to work together with Gordon Jill. And this is a building from 2013 in Seoul, Korea. Now this corporate look turns me off a little, but um, I see here a lot of technological sophistication, a lot of uh, know-how, you know, to to escape the, the guilt of uh, employing actually so much glass and certainly so much air conditioning. Someone maybe uh, would do well by uh, analyzing the details of this facade. If someone thinks that through technology alone, we can uh, arrive at uh, sustainability. Person personally, I doubt it. But it's an imposing building in the capitalistic uh, quarter of uh, Seoul. Maybe all Seoul is capitalistic, but this is where the offices are, the banks and all the rest. Glass, glass and glass again. Long live glass. I don't understand these people how they claim that they do sustainable architecture when they ignore the cardinal points. Because you see the elevations of the building are the same. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, a facade is oriented towards south or west or east or north. These are to be studied by someone else at a different time. Anyway, Seoul. Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill Architecture, the FKI Tower. Now the Waldorf Astoria in Beijing, 2014. I wonder what Mao would have thought it if a Waldorf Astoria, immensely expensive uh, hotel would have uh, would have been built in Beijing. But Mao is dead, so long live capitalism. Capitalism plus, I mean, uh, communism plus the dollar equals God. Uh, this was this was the the ideology of the double systems, the double system that China uh, started to employ a number of years ago, and it apparently is very successful. On one hand, ideological uh, communism; on the other hand, you know, uh, uh, viral. Uh, materialistic concerns and capitalistic concerns. Waldorf Astoria is a very expensive uh, uh, hotel and uh, here it is in Beijing. And the building was done by Adrian Smith and his partner, Gordon Gill. You see the <clears throat> W and the A, they're proudly uh, asserting themselves. This is not for proletarians. Greatly crafted, but sadly, the windows do not open, do they? Maybe they do have a segment that opens, maybe, but none is open. Why? Because of its majesty air conditioning, that's why.
yes, the architects try to persuade us with the wisdom of the uh, technological prowess, but but the windows do not open and the air conditioning takes care of the temperature inside. And Waldorf Astoria, of course, can very well pay the bills. Expo 2017 uh, in Kazakhstan, a project by SASGG, uh, some indulgence in the fluidity, you know, uh, after so much uh, uh, <clears throat> fluidity coming from uh, Zaha Hadid architects and others. Here they are also uh, attempting to address fluidity, I would say, uh, rather ungraciously and too, too explicitly with that uh, sphere at the center. Personally, I don't like this project at all. I find it bombastic. Said. Now, Greenland Center, super tall Wuhan, where the coronavirus crisis started from, 2019, it's called Greenland Center uh, Tower, very much so, here it is. I wonder what coronavirus, uh, coronavirus uh, thought of this tower. Uh, I think it was built or the construction started uh, you know, you look at this building and you say, this is clearly a tower built by an all-powerful uh, Anthropos. And then when you think that the whole city was closed down and, uh, you know, the drama of the beginning of the pandemic and uh, all that, uh, which is uh, still to an extent continued, continued to this day and it's not totally clarified what happened. And look at this tower, which uh, says, what pandemic? There is no such thing. What crisis? There is no such thing. What does it mean to lock up people in their apartments for days and days because no one was allowed to, to get out? Uh, yeah, the building was built. Maybe by now it was already finalized, but these are pictures from while still in construction. <clears throat> Who'd have thought at that time when uh, courageously Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill uh, conceived this building that you know the COVID uh, pandemic would happen very very soon. Anyway, concrete, steel, the glory of height, elevators, money, progress. Chengdu Greenland Tower, super tall in Chengdu in 2020. Uh, this is another super tall building by them. A proposal, I don't think it was built yet. Is this building aspiring towards God or towards the infinite or the absolute like the, the endless column by Brancusch? I'm not so sure. Adrian Smith and Gordon G. And of course their office, they didn't do the work, uh, just the two of them. How do we compare these buildings with the, with the villas and churches and the, the works in general of Andrea Palladio, who died on the 19th of August, while Adrian Smith was born on the, 5th, on the 19th of August, but many years later, meaning in 1944. Central Park Tower, <coughs> super tall, New York City, 2020. His uh, most prestigious, uh, the most prestigious address in the world, offering endless views, exquisite architecture, gracious layouts, and an unprecedented level of service. Central Park Tower will be the definitive New York skyscraper. Of course, this is a publicity uh, coming from the real estate people. Um, 
to become the world's tallest residential skyscraper, <clears throat> the Central Park Tower, sales of the ultra high end residences uh, are slated to commence immediate, imminent, Im imminently as the structure continues to rise at 225 West 57th Street, designed by Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill Architecture, the skyscraper is expected to reach 472 meters tall when it completes in 2019. But I didn't see it uh, completed, I don't know. Uh, I, think I have to double check this. <clears throat> Now, this very famous, more, much more famous tower, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, uh, what can we say? God is reachable. Maybe even uh, Frank Lloyd Wright would have uh, had uh, trepidations because, you know, he proposed a one mile tower uh, a building for New York City, which was not built, but this was built higher and higher and higher and higher. It is impressive. We have to confess. We have to recognize it for its height. In terms of architecture, maybe it's not so impressive. I mean, uh, there is a, an element of conventionality, here, aesthetical conventionality, although in terms of height, it is not conventional at all. Look at it. Dubai. Actually, it has almost a Soviet kind of aesthetics, a Soviet, you know, it's, it's like Soviet architecture in a way, but much, 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 much taller. And of course, the function is not uh, socialistic or communistic at all. Uh, sorry, I don't know what I did here. So, I'm sorry, I... I, I, I I pressed the wrong button. I'm very sorry, I, I was here. Okay, so Dubai. And look at it, you know, it's making the other skyscraper look ridiculously short above the clouds. Even from this level up, it is very, very tall indeed. Now, oh, Jeddah Tower, mega tall, Saudi Arabia. So he built the, they built this one, and now they go over, uh, you know, one thousand, uh, one thousand uh, meters high. It's not yet the one mile that uh, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, not the most modest man in the world proposed. So this one that we just saw, the Bush, uh, uh, Kabila, I'm not reading it very well, uh, Bush Khalifa is 828 meters in Dubai and in Jeddah, uh, 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 Saudi Arabia, uh, 1000 meters. So almost 200 meters taller, the Kingdom Tower which you see here on the left. And what will follow, of course, an even taller one, being built by who knows, who knows who, Santiago Calatrava or someone else, because um, the aspiration towards um, higher and higher measurements never ends, because we are obsessed by quantity, not so much by quality. Look at the poor Tour Eiffel at 324 meters pathetically short compared to these uh, verticals of ambition. Le plus haut gratte-ciel du monde, the, hot, the tallest uh, skyscrapers in the world. And uh, the, the two tallest by far uh, are by Adrian Smith and Gordon Chip. Work on Megatol Jeddah Tower resumes after delays. Uh, it was built. Now, the expo in Dubai in 2020, this is what they proposed. And uh, I am not uh, totally seduced by, uh, by these, uh, these works they did uh, 
saw previously uh, work for a World Expo, and now we see another one, this one in Dubai, and yes, maybe it has some interesting parts because of the insinuation of ornament, but otherwise these uh, bulky spherical or uh, round structures are, uh, I, I think the corporate feeling uh, is a little bit disturbing centralized mono, monoliths. But there is a level of complexity here on the elevation because of the, the intricacies, uh, the ornamental intricacies of the facades. This, at this stage of the process of building it, maybe even a certain side of uh, Frank Lloyd Wright would have uh, accepted or even appreciated perhaps. I'm referring to that side which uh, built the Greek Orthodox Church later in his life. Now, uh, Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill architecture, the latest architecture news, has unveiled new images for the competition of the South Hexi, Hexi Yuzui financial district, of course, it had to be financial, the foundation for a new world-class water from business district, the 500 meter tall tower, part of the development will become the new focal point for the district, attracting businesses and tourists from China and the international market. And here, here it is the proposal with uh, the towers of uh, ambition asserting themselves with the, the aforementioned ambition. The financial district and the cars running, running, running towards the infinite. That's what they hope, but I doubt it. Anyway, capitalism, the unstoppable capitalism, which is uh, convinced that can bring paradise on earth. That is for 1% of the population of the world. Although I learned uh, recently that uh, the United States has uh, about 22 million, 22 million millionaires. Can you believe it? This is a population a little bit larger than the population of Romania. It became almost uh, banal to be a millionaire in such a context. For example, uh, somebody told me that in Aspen, Colorado, the millionaires are forced to leave the city because of the billionaires. <laughs> so if you are a millionaire, it's not, a, it's not something so great any longer because you might have to, you might have to, uh, to leave when the billionaires arrive. That's it. Thank you. And happy birthday, Adrian Smith. <laughs>